In this video, I'll show you how to draw all nine of these cute cartoon sloths using your iPad and Procreate. I'll show you how to sketch, ink, color, and detail all of these cute little guys step by step. Grab your iPad and let's get started. We're going to be using Procreate for this tutorial using an iPad and an Apple Pencil. If you don't already have Procreate, you can grab it in the App Store. It costs about $10. And if you're someone who's interested in digital art, it's definitely worth it. It's a really great drawing program, um, and I think you'll use it a ton. So we'll start by opening up Procreate. And to get started, I'm going to walk you through the settings that I used for this drawing so you can set up your own document. I used a print width of 5,121 pixels wide by 2,880 pixels high with a DPI of 300 for print quality images. I'm using just two brushes to create these drawings and both of them come with Procreate. So for the sketching portion, I like to use the peppermint pencil, which you can find in the brush library under sketching. And for the inking part, I use the studio pen, which you can find in the brush library under inking. I use lots of different layers when I create these drawings, but for now we'll just set up the background layer. This layer will be there by default when you create a new document. So all you need to do is tap on that background color and pick whatever color you want for your background. I've set it to blue here, but I'm actually going to work on white. Next we'll create a layer for our rough sketch, which is just to lay out the positioning of the sloths, and it's just a regular layer set to 100% opacity. If you have any questions about the steps that we take in this tutorial, make sure you ask them in the comments below. I totally don't mind answering the questions and it'll also help me with future tutorials to know what I can be more clear about. Okay, let's get drawing. So you've got to select that rough sketch layer and make sure you're drawing in that. I'm using the default peppermint pencil that comes with Procreate in a dark gray color and at a size of about 25%. And all we're doing here is blocking in the really basic shapes and proportions of the sloths. I want these guys to look super cute. So the proportions that I'm going to use are about um, the body is one, the head is one, and the length of the limbs are one. So they should all be roughly equal in height. That's not a natural proportion, but the bigger the head, the cuter the character. So as you're drawing, just make sure you've got those roughly in proportion. I had to speed this video up quite a bit because in real time it would have been hours and hours long. So if you need to pause the video to complete a layer, feel free to do that and just use the layer as a reference. Once you're done sketching this layer, you're going to set the opacity of the rough sketch layer to about 35% so that you'll be able to see the good sketch layer, which we're gonna do next. Add another layer, just a regular layer with nothing special, called Good Sketch, and set the opacity to 100. We'll be drawing in that layer next. I'm using the same peppermint pencil again, and this time we're going to go over top of our rough sketch and start to fill in some of the details. So we'll take a little bit more time to make sure that the shapes are correct and that we've got things like the eyes in place and the hair kind of sticking out where it's supposed to on the top of the sloth's heads um, and even little details like the claws. Getting all of the details right in this layer will make it a lot easier to do the inking layer next. You really need to watch the proportions on this layer too. I know I have a tendency to kind of drift to a smaller drawing than what I originally drew. So you'll see sometimes I draw in the head a little too small and then I, I select it and puff it up a bit bigger. Um, it's important that the heads stay fairly large to end up with a cute character. I'm also going to draw in a few of the details in the background that we left out of the um, rough sketch layer. So things like the little butterflies and leaves on the trees. So now's the time to add those details as well. Take your time with this layer because getting this right will make the inking layer go much, much smoother. Once you're all done your good sketch layer, we'll set the opacity down to 30, 35% for that one again too, so that we'll be able to see our ink lines over top. And then you'll need to make another layer. This one I've called lines, or you can call it ink. 
and you can set it as a reference layer, which will allow us to fill it in with color later on. We're now working on the lines layer that we just created and adding our ink lines into the drawing. So for this, I'm using the Studio Pen brush. It's a nice smooth brush. And what's really important about this layer is that you make all of your lines nice and smooth. I'll be honest, this layer can be pretty tedious. Um, you'll see that with the video sped up, it looks like my lines are flashing. That's because as I draw, I draw, undo, draw, undo, draw, undo <laughs> through the whole layer to make sure that all of the lines are smooth and exactly where I want them. This layer is part of the finished drawing, so you want to make sure that everything is just the way you want it. The default Studio Ink brush that comes with Procreate is fairly smooth, but you can actually go into the brush settings by tapping on the brush in the brush library. And there's an option in there called Stabilization, and then there's something called Streamline. And if you set that higher, it'll make your brush smoother. And if you set it lower, it'll make it a little more accurate to the way you're actually drawing. So it's really helpful to play with that setting a bit to get the brush to the smoothness that you're most comfortable drawing with. The other thing that's important in this layer is to make sure that all your shapes are fully closed, that your lines meet at the corners and they don't have gaps in them. We're going to use these lines as a reference to drop color into in the next layer. And if there are gaps in the um, gaps where the lines meet, the color won't fill in properly. So think of it like a coloring book. You want fully defined shapes with no gaps so that you'll know where to put each color and where one color ends and another color begins. Once you're finished all of the lines and you're happy with where everything is, we'll add a color layer and start dropping in our colors. Okay, so we just finished up the lines layer. Make sure that you have that set to reference, that's important. And you wanna make a new layer, just a blank regular layer called color. Don't worry about the highlights, details, and shadow layer right now. We'll add that in after. You should just have lines and then directly below it, color. If you haven't done it already, you can uncheck the two sketching layers so that those are not showing while we're doing our color. With your color layer selected, we're going to start dropping in the colors for the sloths. So if you're not familiar with doing this, this is why we set the lines to a reference and Procreate will use those lines as um, like constraints for the colors that you put on your color layer. So when you drop the color onto your color layer, it will only fill in the um, space inside of the lines. It's kind of like the paint bucket in um, Photoshop or even like MS Paint, if you're familiar with those. It just fills in inside of the lines. So you select your color in the color swatch just as you normally would, and then just drag it directly from the color swatch into the shape that you want to color and procreate will color in the shape for you. You'll see that I set the background color to blue for this part and the reason that I do that is because if you have it set to white it's really difficult to see things like the whites of the eyes and the claws that are white or very close to white so you can pick a color that you're not using in your art to make it easier to see where the whites in your drawing are. And one other point is that I had a few shapes that I didn't complete the lines for in the previous part, like the ends of the tree branches. They were just open. So when you go to drop color into that, Procreate doesn't know where to put the color and it'll fill in your entire drawing with that color. So if you need to go back and close any gaps or make any changes, I also added in butterflies and I think some leaves. You can just go back to your um, lines layer, add in your lines that you need to add and then go back to your color layer. Switching back and forth is not a problem. Now that we've got all our basic colors in place, we're going to add some highlights, shadows, and details to the drawing. Now you can do this all on one layer if you like, but I prefer to work with three different layers so that I can change things uh, later on if I make a mistake. I find it a little bit difficult if you've drawn like a shadow over top of a detail and then you need to come back and change it later. So 
I set it up as three separate layers, highlight on top, details in the middle, shadow on the bottom. Each of these layers that you create need to be set to clipping mask. And what clipping mask does is make sure that the stuff that you draw in these three layers does not go outside of the color that we dropped on the color layer. So even if you draw a big wide line over top of some of the color that you've got, you'll only see it in the part that was already colored. This is really helpful for shadows, I find, because you don't need to be precise about the outer edges. You can just draw the inner side of the shadow and then you know, be messy about the outside part of it because that clipping mask is going to make sure that it only shows up on the part where you already had color on the color layer. Because these sets I do of multiple positions of character in, in one art set, they're usually used as clip art for different projects, either by myself or I sell them in my Etsy store. So I try to keep the shadow coming directly from the top of the um, character rather than left or right because that way it makes it easier to flip the image. So if someone wants to flip some of the images but not other ones in their final project, it doesn't look off having the lighting come from two different directions. I'm still just working with the same studio pen that we used for the lines and I like to go in with first a layer of shadow that is slightly darker than the color that was already there. And then I'll go back again over top and make a smaller shadow in an even deeper color to give the perception of depth to the shadow. Because we've got these detail highlight and shadow layers clipped to the color layer below, they'll never go outside of the actual um, color that we laid down on the color layer. So it makes it a lot easier for doing um, the shadows in tight spaces because you don't have to worry about going outside of the lines. So I'm just cutting in where I would expect to see shadow with the light coming down from the top and adding those shadows along the edges. And again, if you need to change something in your lines or color layers, it's totally fine to switch back and forth between layers. It won't cause any problems at all. Um, you can always go back and revise lines. Just remember to switch back to the shadow or highlight layer that you're working on. Um, <laughs> I have many times put shadows on my lines and it kind of messes everything up if you need to go back and change it later on. So we'll just work our way around adding those layers of shadows and details to all of the sloths and then I'll come back and add the highlights at the end. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit like down below. If you're not enjoying it, leave me a comment and let me know what I could improve next time. I really want to make these tutorials as useful as possible for everyone who's watching them. And so your comments and feedback will really go a long way to helping me make them better in the future. This is definitely the longest part of the process. When I looked back at the time lapse of this video that recorded on the iPad while I was drawing, the highlights and shadows and details portion took about half of the total time. And the total time it took to draw these was about 18 hours, which is totally ridiculous. I was drawing slowly because I had a bunch of other stuff going on in the house at the time, but they do take quite a few hours to draw a set like this and go in with all the detail. Obviously I'm drawing these in a kind of flat cartoonish style. I don't want a ton of stray lines in these because I am going to end up making them into vectors later on for different uses. So if you want to add more detail and line strokes and things like that to make the fur pop out a little more or whatever. At this point, I'm also going back and thickening up some of the lines on the outside a little bit. So again, just make sure you're working on your lines layer when you're doing that. But I just wanted to add some thickness um, on the side where the shadows fall to give it a little bit more dimension. Make sure you get the shadows on all of the tree branches and leaves and butterflies and everything as well. You don't want to add them only to the sloths because you want everything to look consistently dimensional. And at the end here, I'm just going to go on to that highlight layer and add a little bit of light colored highlights into the sloths fur. 
Depending on what you're using these graphics for that you've drawn, you may or may not want to add this last layer. So I've added a shadows layer at the very bottom, just above the background color. And all this is, is a bit of a drop shadow to help the images pop off the page. Just a regular layer at 100% opacity. I'm just drawing the shadows in as sort of detailless blobs. I'm using this studio pen to do that. So if you don't want to add those, totally fine. It just depends on what you're doing with the images. If you want to download the PNG and vector versions of these guys for your own projects, head over to mandyartmarket.com where you'll find these and all of my other art. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you want to follow along and draw more cartoon characters, check out my cute cartoons in Procreate playlist. See you soon.